In the year 2020, my partner Omar and I hopped on a flight and embarked on a journey of lifetime. We left behind our life in England and set our sights on the serene beauty of the Portuguese countryside. We put a container and parked it on my sister's land as a temporary home. We started our quest then for the perfect property and settled on this one and have been renovating it ever since. But let me take you back to the beginning. Our property sprawled over 3,400 square meters of fertile land, featuring fruit trees yearning for care, 24 olive trees, an orange tree that gives the sourest orange you can imagine, and some other citrus that are starting to come along. The land's gentle slope promised a perfect canvas for irrigation, while its square layout was a very nice surprise. There is a roof structure on one end of the property, a threshing ground in the middle and a gated enclosed property with a house and some outbuildings. Through these massive doors there is a room on the right, a roofed outbuilding on the left where chickens and rabbits probably used to live. This outbuilding is attached to a more permanent dwelling which was once probably a kitchen with a bread oven and a chimney. Then a house built on two floors, the bottom one being a cellar where wine and olive oil and maybe some animals were kept. Upstairs there are two rooms, a main room with a really nice view towards the land and another one divided in three, a hallway and two small rooms. Oh yeah, it had no bathroom and no kitchen, but we liked that. It was bare bones and we could see all the marks, wounds and cracks. We embraced the challenge. There was no massive surprises. Oh, what are we doing today? Visiting the lawyer, maybe finalising everything. With the deed in hand and as new residents of our adopted country, we couldn't wait to clear away the cobwebs, breathe life into the property and finally connect with our new home. There was so much glass and clothes buried in the land that even now we still find some. Oh yeah, we also bought our first car here. Ah, the first Audi, Omar. Oh, the first Audi. <laughs> The container was transported to the land and became our base. And we are now in our container hey. and here we are in our land. A humble sanctuary amidst all the work ahead. Right now I'll be looking at making a few adjustments to our water. We could really do with a shower. We connected the water and cooked with a portable stove. Then we added a simple outdoor shower. Be helpful if it stayed into place. Look! We need more stones over there. Put that stone over there. Yes, <laughs> have a shower. We were in, settled and started to enjoy our first days at our land. We marveled at the realization that this place was now our canvas. A new comfort was added to our list. After days of this, we built our first ever compost toilet. So here we have our finished compost toilet. Unseasoned wood became our source material. Not the most comfortable material to work with. You know, look how thick that it is. is over here. Yeah, it's not very I mean, accurate. It's very wonky this wood, isn't it? It's wet, stubborn and twists fast, but readily available locally. Not only being a more sustainable choice, but also four times cheaper than dry seasoned wood. It would become a massive pillar to our future okay. build. Our first challenge, safeguarding the house from further decay. We tore down non-structural wood so the lower house would have more airflow. <laughs> That's one way to do it. <laughs> we saved some of the wood that could be reused but most of it was dusty and crumbly so it needed to be disposed of. We purchased our first luxury, a gas boiler. We installed it and we were so thrilled to finally have hot water in the property. 
Ooh, it's on. Then the container, our shelter, needed a transformation. It was really badly insulated and needed to be redone for comfort in all seasons, discarding the old rock wall for efficient polystyrene boards instead. So that's been done, all the easy bit is been done. Now comes the difficult bit, which is that and that and that. We thought this would not only provide better insulation for all weather and seasons, but also helped us with our previous condensation problems. All of the metal boards that we took off were saved as they were straight and probably useful later. Well, that was a very rough night last night. Oh. Yet the thin metal roof echoed every drop of rain, leaving us with sleepless nights. To mitigate the issue, Omar ingeniously used netting to soften the sound while we search for a more permanent solution. Here we are back at the top of the container with the temporary solution for the noisy room downstairs. We have the shade netting installed, it's stretched over the tile battens uh, which we bought from the woodyard and not only does it stop the noise from the rain falling on the, the roof of the container, it's also taking the sunlight but I can definitely tell you that the rain is not as noisy as it was before. So cool, I'm very happy with this solution. It was really starting to feel like we were improving the space. Okay, so the first battles are up. They're very, very small and fiddly. Down once, we've got two coming in from this side. So we got, they're going to be like this. We carried on with the ceiling and installed pine tone and groove panels. So this is the very last bit. Omar engineered two of them together because it's such a small place. <gasps> yes! Well done! <laughs> the new ceiling really breathed life into our container home, wrapping it in a warm, homely embrace. And there was more work to be done, but a vision was finally taking shape. Luckily at this point it was May and we were enjoying less rainy days. We had plans on what to do next and the need for a proper roof became undeniable. So it's like 5 p.m. now and the sun thankfully is starting to go behind our olive tree uh, which is just behind me over there. It's really really appreciated because seriously it's getting really hot nowadays. The best place at the moment is in that the main house because the container as well is getting quite hot. We need that roof up ASAP. At this point, our challenge were the container roof. We did still have some condensation problems due to the cooking and the endless tea and coffee production indoors. So not only did we need a roof, but we also really needed a separate kitchen area with the added luxury of an indoor shower and a toilet. So Omar came up with this plan. Well, let's get to work. The first step was to make the foundations for our pillars to hold the roof, so we started to remove the shistu stones and dig. Don't worry, we have a plan for this floor.
We need to dig a little bit more. We have a last one over here. So we have finished the holes on this area. Um, we're very happy with the depth and everything. So now we're gonna focus on organizing and tidying up the area where the toilet shower area is gonna go. So basically along the area over here, I want to dig enough to put a wastewater pipe. Also put our water inlet in there. So it's basically going to be a channel that takes all of the services into our container and into the place where our shower and washing machine is going to be. After exploring various methods, we devised this design for crafting the essential foundation boxes. This particular approach was just one of the two methods we experimented with during this project. So that's the box, and that is a little bit bigger than we needed. So that's gonna sit on top of that. To be completely honest, it might not be our absolute favorite. You see, we chose this method because it was familiar, and more importantly, we had most of the materials readily available, making the most what we had at hand. The first layer of concrete over here, number two, number three, and number four. We are not experts. <laughs> This is not a tutorial, so fingers crossed. And then tomorrow, we are going to be doing that. block over here and then with the belts and that's where the brackets are gonna go on top definitely not perfect we're hoping we can fix it a little bit later on but it's the first time we do something like this so that's as far as we're gonna go and uh, hopefully the brackets are gonna hide any imperfections and I'm sure we can work on it somehow With the introduction of an absolute essential to any farm, a strimmer, we knew it was time to tackle the wild overground land that had desperately needed our attention. We lit bonfires and cleared out a mountain of unusable wood. Here's the twist. We didn't let it all go to waste. So I was kind of hoping there would be some sort of trapdoor, you know, maybe a gold mine, but unfortunately it's just dirt. But something that I did find that was quite cool 
is that we've got quite a lot of bedrock over here under this house. And uh, I just love being down here, you know, because the walls are so exposed and I can really see that they're in such good condition that uh, it fills me with hope that this will be a beautiful house one day and we won't have to tear the whole thing down. I'm working on that old steamboat and learn to ride. When my feet are touched by land, how happy I did feel. Instead, we reused all that wood, crafting a practical compost bin. Been saving every penny for to make up through the fall. Working for that dollar, but it never adds up at all. And even fashioning a lid from leftover materials right on our land. It was also time to build a bit more privacy for a shower. We got some gardening screening materials and sturdy posts and built an outdoor shower space that not only offered a lot more peace of mind with more privacy, it was so amazing to have an outdoor shower. So my sister left earlier, so thank you very much, Jai, for helping me. So this is going to be a much nicer area to have a shower with a lot more privacy, and I'm very happy with the result, even though it's not perfect, but it does what it needs to do, and I feel a lot more comfortable being there watching the landscape around us, and so we naturally baptize it our barley shower. That's our view. After finishing our main foundation boxes, cleared the land and upgraded our shower, life took a turn. So we are about to go very soon. I'm a bit sad because We've done so much progress here. We needed to head back to the UK to work and save more money for our renovation. Your destination no. After precious moments with our family and enjoying the charm of a summerly UK, it was time to head home. This time, cutting more ties to the UK, we bought a cheap 500 pound car and took the majority of our belongings to Portugal that were stored away at my parents' house. Morning everyone. Good morning. Our road trip from the UK to Portugal was nothing short of extraordinary. It's an experience we wholeheartedly recommend. The open road, the changing landscapes and the promise of a new chapter in Portugal. <laughs> but when we arrived, we were greeted by a landscape wildly overgrown. That nature has taken over. Remember, all of this is totally clear and we were digging over here and it's almost like little plant pots that we've dug into the ground. This is almost as high as I am. Without missing a bit though, we roll up our sleeves and took the challenge head on. We were also blessed with the joy of community and kindness when a neighbor shared their harvest of tomatoes with us. This is actually super common living in a Portuguese village and one of the main reasons we love living here. Not only is it amazing to be building your own home, but those kinder, quieter days where you can cook from the land. And so we did, tomato chutney from our neighbor's tomatoes and fig jam from our own trees. This is like my favorite jam. After taking it easy for a few days, we started the project again. The foundations were done already for the main posts, so we moved over to the extension area. We decided to try a different method here and tried the tubular concrete forms instead. 
Not only was it much easier to set up, but the forms allowed you to make a much flatter top with the concrete. Our very first one. It worked so much better, we would definitely recommend this method instead. Yeah, we're gonna put some plastic on top of all of them, just in case the rain comes tomorrow. By this time we had been in the property for six months and had done a tremendous progress. It was also the beginning of autumn and the urge to have a roof really started to become real. The moment we'd been eagerly waiting for arrived, for when the deliveries for our roof frame started pouring in, we'd placed the orders in for the essential building blocks of the roof, four hefty 15 by 15 centimeter unseasoned pine posts and a bunch of 10 by 10 posts for the extension. As we settled into our groove and were comfortable with our new rhythm, we decided to push the boundaries of our abilities. With each step, we found room for innovation and experimentation. Our focus turned to the wood, a vital part of our project. Some pieces require special treatment, protection from fungus and bugs. But for those exposed to the elements, we sought a higher level of resilience. That's when we dwelled into the world of Shosugi Ban. Shosugi Ban, a centuries old Japanese technique, involves charring the wood. then brushing it with a metal brush. Repeat for a second time the burning and the brushing. And finally nourishing it with a coat of linseed oil. The result, nothing short of brilliance. It not only shielded the wood from the elements as evident in the wood's brilliant condition even three years later, but it also transformed it into a beautiful work part that continued to evolve with age. We wanted to experiment beyond just functionality, but wanted to make something that would be looked at and absolutely love it. A reminder that the resilience and even imperfect craftsmanship will be cherished as it will be made by us. As we poured our hearts into this project, we recognized the importance of every detail. One crucial aspect was raising the wooden posts slightly above the ground, ensuring that any water could run off without compromising their integrity. We sought the help of skilled local artisans who crafted sturdy metal brackets with a double strong base. Once these brackets arrived, they were exposed to the elements for a while. They were brushed, then sprayed with a protective primer before being painted in a sleek black finish. Once they were ready, we installed them onto our main foundations. Those were useful at the end. Metal straw cleaner, just to clean all the stuff from it, and then using the hoover to clean it all out around it. Okay, so we've done all of the posts. It was um, took a little bit of time. Okay. So we have our other concrete blocks, which we did in the beginning with the wooden shuttering. We had made a template, and so theoretically, the template matched the holes over here. And the idea was is that it was all going to go nice and easy, and it was all just going to fall in, <laughs> and it doesn't. So we have all of the brackets in place, that's very good news. Cool! Well done! Last oh. one!
fantastic. With the wood primed and ready and every bracket firmly in its place, the moment had arrived to start the extension framework. The process was not as simple as it sounds, but first we positioned the extension posts to mark where they will be cut. We mark the exact spots where the notches will be and carefully cut and chisel out the notches, allowing the beams to slip into their designated spots. I thought that's pretty good. Okay, so we've got our, our top beam, which is resting on the container, and we've marked where the posts are going to be, so we need to cut out some notches so we can join the cross beam with it later. So now is the difficult task of taking that down uh, without hurting ourselves. So that's what we're <laughs> going to try and do now. It was the first time we've ever done anything like this, so it wasn't perfect, but we were quite proud of what we had done here. Now it was time to focus on the main support post. Our foundations had its quirks, the concrete forms were not perfectly uniform and the brackets stood at different heights. To get everything just right, we employed the water level method. Using a long tube filled with water, we placed one end at the top of the container. It works based on the principle that water seeks its own level as long as there are no bubbles trapped inside the tube. This super ancient method never fails in accuracy. Now that everything was cut, it was time to put the extension framework at the main beams up. Just 
leave it there for a second. Okay, put it all the way in. Okay, now position it correctly on your one. That's what I like. <laughs> Bang on, perfect. Okay. Oh. It's a huge roof, man. Yeah. On the right side. Oh, yes, yes, yes. By this time of the year it was mid-October. We have never foraged before but the land was abundant and it gave us our first foraging experience with parasol mushrooms. They're quite sturdy, they're not woody, they're not dry. This is nice and firm and then the bottom bit is so white. So that's how we know that it's ready and we can take it. I'm really excited. We also had our first ever experience harvesting our own olives. We didn't manage to harvest many as you do need help with your own 24 olive trees, but nonetheless it was an experience we still cherish. After many months of crouching, bending and cutting on the ground to ease our labour, we decided to build our workbench as big as we needed and could afford. Okay, so now I'm gonna start working on the vise because that's going to complete the workbench. And I've been given this old thing, which is fantastic. I love these old vices. The only thing is, is that it's kind of jammed. It does move a little bit, but it doesn't even do a full rotation. So I'm gonna take all of this old wood out. I've got some nice hardwood that I'm going to replace it with. I'm going to put lots of grease on it, spray paint the parts that I can spray paint and give it a good tidy, basically. So I'm super, super, super happy with uh, the vice. I have to say a big thank you to Simon for giving that to me. It's been a really, really cool project. 
and I'm pretty sure it is going to come into so much use. This. Here is the wood yard, and over there, it's our piece of wood. Armed with another delivery of wood, we prepared for the next vital chapter, constructing the upper roof frame and installing the rafters. This time, we used the standard 10 by 7 untreated wood for the rafters, providing the foundation for our upcoming task. The next challenge ahead called for an extra set of hands and a fresh perspective. That's when Simon joins our team. With his invaluable assistance, we embark on the completion of the roof, marking a significant milestone that will bring us one step closer to turning our vision into reality and give us the much needed comfort during the winter ahead. In the future, we will learn that our project will thrive on collaboration demonstrating that we could achieve more by working together and leveraging each other's strengths. It served as a reminder that each forward stride represented our unwavering determination and resilience in bringing our shared vision to life. It would also serve to do what we came here to do, which is, yes, to have our dream home, but also to have calm days, enjoy our new country and the days of simple joys. We always have envisioned our property to be quite traditional with a touch of modernity, but as a container will be cladded with wood in the future, we needed tiles that would blend the container into the landscape, harmonizing the old with the new. With these tiles in hand, we set in motion the roof construction, a significant step in our journey to create a living space that effortlessly blended the classic with the contemporary. So we're just testing them to see if they work nicely. They do. Very happy. This side. All right.
Hey everyone, how are we doing? Welcome to our channel. This first year was an amazing experience, but one of our highlights was starting a YouTube channel. Not only it allowed us to share our progress with our family abroad, but it also opened our world to 33,000 of you who have been supporting our channel, giving us invaluable recommendations and words of encouragement on our comment section. Thank you so much. It also opened a world of opportunities like getting portable power stations to reduce our reliance on the main electrical grid. It is so fitting that Jackery sponsors this video as they were our first sponsorship for our channel. As you guys know, we're big fans of portable power stations and the Jackery 500 was actually our first ever one that was given to us about two years ago. And we can say that it's been used for countless barbecues and gatherings and every day for charging our devices. We also have the 100 watt portable solar panels and I have to say they are the best designed on the market. They're super easy to set up and then put away again. So we're very happy to announce that Jackery are offering a massive Black Friday sale of up to 50% off all their products. This particular product has got a 46% off, it's only £299 and you can buy that on Amazon or their website. Black Friday sales start on the Jackery website between the 10th and the 30th of November and for Amazon it's between the 6th and the 28th of November. However, there are even bigger discounts on both of those websites between the 17th and the 27th of November. For more information just head down to the description below or you can scan the QR code right here. So today Jackery are actually giving away one of their latest batteries to you guys. It's called the Explorer 100 Plus. It's worth £139.99. It's the first kind of battery that you can take on a plane. It can be charged by USB, by their solar panels and also by your car. And all you have to do is leave a comment down below and then on the 30th of November we'll randomly choose someone and we'll announce the winner. So do it right away. Thank you so much Jackery for sponsoring us. It really helps us to make videos like this. This year was a whirlwind of experiences. It was a period of growth where we acquired new skills, adapted to life in Portugal and met amazing people. But it does get better.